Welcome to Well.com. <clears throat> We've been doing a series of how to get started, you know, what to practice on, what's, what's good to do that I can get some, some skills and some, some benefits and some control and some results. And we've been doing, we did a, we've been using a lot of the eighth inch carbon steel, inexpensive, readily available. I've been cutting these at two inches by six inches. And some of the others that we did, we bead blasted them, buffed them up, cleaned them so that we could see heat trace. This particular joint, uh, I'm gonna do like an outside uh, corner joint. I'm gonna tack these up at near 90 degrees without any gap or very, very little gap. And it's gonna be an exercise of doing, filling this simulated, I call it a poor man's bevel uh, for no other good terms, just an outside corner joint, but it allows you a place to put filler metal instead of just running beads on a plate. It allows you to try to get some real straight lines, same height, same width. So real simple. I'm going to tack up over here, <clears throat> right here in this very corner. If I can't get this to fuse across just without any filler wire, because I have to hang on to this, then I will probably come in here and put a spot of material down or I may grab a, a brick or a, a magnet or something to hold this up. So this coupon is facing right towards you. And I'm not trying to hold this one in line either. I always put these over here at an angle so that I can stand them up and gauge what's going on here. So if I just, if, if the only thing I'm working on is this corner and that's the only thing I'm worried about, then I put the tack right in the corner it allows me to pivot this piece and fit it up on two planes and get it a nice corner to corner. Let me get my safety glasses and hood on. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, uh, we are gonna run off. We've been playing around with this Everlast 200 DV, DV meaning dual voltage, and I am running off the 110 volt side of the input, which gives me 125 amps output if I had it in the 220 single phase, I would get the 200 amps output. We don't need it on this particular weld. This is more about control. So let me first attempt to do this without filler wire as we described in our opening. I'm gonna angle this off just a little bit. I am working on the corner only. I don't wanna close the corner up and I'm, this one I'm not trying to do gap. So here we go. Well, it took it, but I kind of kind of left a little blowout spot there. I don't know if you can see that cupped in a little bit. My bad. I'll get better. Now, I'm able to bend this around. I can move it I can move it this way, I can move this one. I can move them around a little bit, gotta flex them. Oops. And I can also break them. I knew that was gonna happen. Tack up again. So I'm looking at it this way and it's good and I'm looking at it this way and it's good. Now when I tack this one I will use a dab of filler wire so I don't blow up this corner. I'm gonna get on some Iron Cat goat skins, very comfortable glove. Kind of feel everything, good heat resistance. Some people have commented, I had a good conversation with a gentleman over in Missouri about how I hold the torch or how he should hold it. And he thinks I'm hanging on to it way up here and I guess I am, but it's more like I have the parts that are actually touching are back away from whatever's going to generate the heat. And again, I'm not making a very big weld, so I don't, I don't feel this heat. It's not cooking my fingers. 
I believe he was saying he was having a real good, real hard time of just roasting his fingertips. And, you know, for good practice, for doing a lot of these welds right here on the bench. And even later on, when we're out of position going uphill and horizontal, depends on how you prop your fingers. You know, if you have to hold a finger against the material somewhere, I, I just hang on to it real light. That way I can manipulate the torch, feel comfortable with it. Uh, we need to cut because I don't have enough filler wire. Be right back. I'm gonna start out and uh, I put a fresh tungsten in here and I grabbed another piece of filler wire, but I wanna start out and let's just experiment and see what happens with adding no filler wire, just kind of doing a, a blend, try to get this. It'll probably end up real flat. Um, this kind of like the oxyacetylene weld that we do every now and then, uh, where we're just using the edges to melt and, and move that puddle forward. So let's experiment and see what happens. This should be a real, real simple exercise. About 75 amps. 54. How many? 54. Oh, I'm way off of it, huh? So, you know, it did what we thought it was going to do. It's just real flat. It's okay. You know, the whole thing is I'm trying to, I'm using the edges, so I'm trying to weave that consistent back and forth. Slide me that weld right there, will you? Good thing that wasn't hot, huh? We did a we did a weld here not too long ago. I put this out on my Instagram, and I, I even said it was oxyacetylene. We've done some others where we had people guess, and it's kind of clean, but um, you know, it's the same thing with oxyacetylene. We're just moving metal. So it's kind of a fun exercise. Same thing here. Again, we're practicing some kind of some kind of control. Now we're going to add filler wire and continue on. I'm going to guess 65. Well, that's close. So there, a distinct difference in bead, bead color uh, between 65 and 70 amps, and we're just doing our dab, dab, dab a doo technique here, and we got a lot rounder. The edges are kind of completed where these are sharp. Either one of them is okay. Uh, again, practice. Practice the straight lines, the same height, all comes with travel speed, electrode angle, arc length. A lot of things you're controlling. This seems to be a very complicated process. It's very easy. You know, we're using the same type of tungsten in a lot of situations. We're using the same gas. 99% of the time we're using argon. So, um, you know, again, we're, we're practicing these hand-eye coordination. So we have two completed welds, one without filler wire for about an inch and a quarter or so, and then we have about two and a half inches or three inches of where we added filler wire. Now what are we going to do? Let's blow it up. Let's do it wrong. Let's put too much heat, too much arc length, wait around too long, and I'll try not to get too nasty with it, but I, you know, you're going to see a, you're going to see how to do it wrong. So, the good camera folks are saying right around 65, 70 or in and around that range. So this will probably be up about 85, 90 
and again I'm going to hold too long of an arc so let's let's see what happens ready Ninety. Hundred amps, the camera girl says. Everybody say, yee, camera girl. Man, this current's starting to get away from me. Too hot, just kind of blowing it up. So, you know, to glance at it, you think, wow, that's just not bad looking at the profile. It definitely melted. I'm, I'm not going to like what I see on the back side. So let's see what we got on the back side. Well, I saw a little porosity. I saw a little sparkle show come out on that last section where we were too hot, too long of an arc. So here's the results on what we have. We didn't put any gap in this. We have very little, if any, melt through on the first part where we didn't use filler wire and we were about 50 something amp, 55 amps. Where we added filler wire and we were up to about 65, 70 amps, we do have a nice melt through. Again, we didn't have any root opening or gap in this thing. And then down here at the end where we were really cooking it and too hot, we have a fair amount but, you know, that may look okay, but I know I was seeing some porosity in it. There's no need to go cut this thing open and test it. That's not what we're trying to do here is test an outside fillet or outside corner joint. But I can also tell by how dark this is. I always, you know, when it gets real dark and crusty, I'm thinking there's something wrong with it. MIG welds, TIG welds, any of that kind of stuff. So. In any event, I, you know, I hope this was a, a decent exercise. For me, if I was going to do, if I was going to continue on, I wouldn't go grab two more plates. I'd grab one and I'd add it and just keep doing the V. After I got done, I'd save these. Oh, I wouldn't make a great big sheet, but I'd do several of them where I'd come out here. I'd save all these, come back in here and clean them, and I would practice either uh, TIG vertical up, horizontal, put them up here somewhere in front of me. Uh, might even go overhead or I would save them and practice MIG. I mean, I, just try to use your material over and over until you can't use it anymore. We could go in here and stack multiple beads with MIG and learn to build that up and r even run them vertical up as well. But. Again, I'd grab one more, that's just me. I'd just grab one at a time, come in here and do the same thing and repeat it. So I hope that helps. If you have questions that we can help, let us know. This is easy, you guys can do it, but you gotta practice. Practice, practice. Thanks for watching Weld.com.